Every game of League of Legends is different. What is happening in this fight? I turned it around! He's gonna go for the triple! Calling for breakfast. They're not even taking damage. Oh, that's the blue buff. Who's gonna get it? Looking for a plastic smash to the wall. Hits it. Oh, he's in the hole. Comes over. Ah, making the waltz up to give a little bit of assistance. Welcome to the North American LCS Summer Split. We've got a packed house clamoring for league action and we aim to deliver. It's Sunday, so we've gathered here at the analyst desk to dive into the latest in LCS action. I'm Irving Tabizan III and assembled beside me is our broadcast brain trust. That's going to be Joshua Jat Leesman, Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler, and David Freak Turley. Now guys, let's get started with the top of the table where we have a, a reser reservation for a party of three right now. CLG, Dig, and LMQ are all five and two in the standings. What is it that each of these teams are doing best right now to keep the coordination up? Freak, let's start with you and LMQ. So LMQ, I think, number one, uh, every single player on that team is playing really well. They're arguably like top three, top four for all their leagues, uh, or across the league for all their positions. Mm. And the fact that they've been playing together as a dedicated lineup, so their, their shot calling is crisp, their coordination is crisp, right? They go in for fights like this knowing that they can win, and it's really awesome to see. They're, they're firing on all cylinders. And Jet, you know, touching on CLG a bit, what could be said as their success? I mean, the crazy thing about CLG as of lately is they're just winning differently than other teams are. The kills in a lot of their games are really close. The gold is close, but they always have a strategy in mind to win the game. They're very solid on what their win conditions are. Last game, they had the poke comp. They could stop Dig and Toss from engaging on them. They knew they were up on turrets, and they knew the strengths of their team at that point were double if and Aphromoo based on the early game opposition. Aphromoo was never in doubt that they were going to lose that game, even right. though it looked close the entire time. Yeah, the most impressive thing to me about CLG right now is their ability to quickly assess the pushing powers of both teams in yep. very different situations. They take into account so many different metrics, the pushing power, the wave clear, the position of both teams on the map, and then they make a split-second judgment call from either Link or Aframu, and that's how they're getting the wins in these small differences in these objective trades that are so close. All right, Kobe, well, we're going to keep it with you. That just leaves Dignitas. What's their key to success? Yeah, it's funny because... That CLG game versus Dignitas kind of exposed basically the one weakness of Dig right now, which are the small late game objective trades where it's such a small difference between uh, coming out with an extra turret or with an extra inhibitor. Everybody knows that this Dignitas team, though, is extremely strong in the team fight, in the early laning phase, and they have the ability uh, to rely on these solo lanes and crumbs with his utility jungle. Yeah. And it's actually very interesting kind of how uh, specifically CLG and Dig match up because CLG's like total KDA for the split is like, they're like plus one kill over death right. because the, way, the the games they win are just like, well, we're going to kill your turrets. Their turret score is probably like 70 to four, mm -hmm. but um, you know they, they win close games on paper, but they're, they're very convincing, whereas Dignitas is very snowball-y. They get Zion ahead, they get Shifter ahead, they kill a bunch of people, and then just by sheer force of will, they close the game out. Um, and that's kind of an interesting metric of like, they're just playing very different games right now. And the very different games are putting them on top, and it's startling to believe that Cloud9 and Team Solo Mid, the top two teams from the spring split, are on the outside looking in right now. Cloud9, the defending champs, are on a bit of a roller coaster ride, to say the least. Yeah, Cloud9, they, they look like a worse version of uh, Summer Split 2013 where they were playing passive, farming up their lanes, just trying to outskill you, and then just like show up for a dragon fight and they would just win because they were bigger than you. Problem is, everyone else has gotten better relative to Cloud9, and the fact that they're not playing the aggressive style they were trying to last split, they're not claiming advantages, mm -hmm. they're allowing teams to catch up. Right When they lost to Evil Geniuses, they had this really good comp built around peeling for Twitch, and Alltech played awesome, and he carried that game because no one could reach him because Cloud9 let him 
be in team fights. Yeah, and let's look at the reasons. I think a lot of the reasons for this uh, Cloud9 struggle have to do with the shift in the meta. I mean, they used to be really strong because Meteos got good counter jungling, deep vision. You know, now he has to spend a lot of time buddy jungling for the yeah. beginning of the game. Yeah. Also, now the mid lane is isolated, so High actually has to have that solo lane experience match up for a longer period of time. And their biggest strength, Balls, their top laner that they used to run so many plays off with Meteos going to that top lane, is actually relegated to the jungle now, and he's very low farm for the beginning of the game. That's really Cloud9's biggest strength, and it's rendered weak in this meta. And yep. this is going to make this first game of the day so interesting because we have CLG against Cloud9. Even with cloud Nine struggles, CLG still says they're probably the best team in the NALCS, and that's the team they fear the most. So we're really going to yep. get to see a little bit of balance of power and whether it's actually shifted here in North America. And TSM's going to have to show their balance. Having lost three straight games now, chat, they seem to be construg they're struggling with just coordination. Yeah, that's the thing with Team Solo Mid, because they've always been strong yeah. individually. They just haven't seemed to adapt that well to the new players because they are all indecisive. It's like they're still kind of playing solo queue. In this clip in particular, Dyrus goes in. Yes, the turret was still a little bit live, but if you isolate that Shivana ult, it was good. He hit three to four people, and that could have been commented upon by Bjergsen's Yasuo. They may have been able to turn that fight, but he ended up just looking like a fool because no one on the team followed him. TSM just kind of has to get on the same page. I don't think they're very far off from being successful. It's weird because it feels like they're missing leadership. Like, all their players, aside from Dyrus, are pretty much new to the team. They've all joined within uh, the last year, year and a half. And who's leading that team? Who's making the calls and keeping them coordinated? Because none of that's working right now. Yeah, I mean, they're missing more Bay Life than ever now. Dyrus is the only... <laughs> Bay life left on the That's team. Why he was going, he's going in. Got to remember the roots. <laughs> All right. Well, yesterday was full of surprises and moments that had us bouncing off the walls. Here now are your LCS big plays. The first one's going to come from Robert X Lee and a relentless attack at the Baron Pit. Chad Dillon one writes, "Ooh, Robert X three from Complexity versus Curse." Here's your number three. They're going to have to walk through the entire wall. A big Jay Timbers from Prolly. Kez is in the fight. Gives a huge kick. What damage from Robert X Lee in this fight? Oh my gosh. Cobb is the only one alive. Triple kill for Robert X Lee. Favorite part about that is also Kez kicking him into the piercing light. Robert just very happy with the way that that one turned out. <laughs> Kez had a fantastic game, by the way, yeah. yesterday. That was good. All right, so up next, it's going to be Crepo racking up the assists all the live long flay. Uh, Sh Shotten LOL tweets, Crepo or Mad Life? Is this the flay? Uh, the flay is real. Here's your number two. It comes from Evil Geniuses versus Cloud9. There is a lantern here. Do not look. Oh. Hi, those in the middle. Oh, the flay on the jump. Very nice. High is ultimate, or using his ultimate now. Crepo's the one taking the brunt of the damage. This is going to be perfect for the damage dealers. Altec going into 1v1 right now with Meteos on the backside. They get a bit of crowd control, but everybody from Cloud9 is being yanked in different directions as Crepo keeps it. Yeah. The flay was rather good. I like to zoom in on the camera work right there. It <laughs> yeah. was all about peeling for all tech. The bug splat onto your camera face, actually. It got pretty close. <laughs> yeah, finally, it's actually two matches of the mid lane and a showdown in where else? The bottom lane. At Thor Kento actually says, the duel between Xiao Xiao and Bjergsen showing a shift in North American mid lane power. From TSM versus LMQ, it's your number one. It's not yes, stinger right now. It's still... It's still uh... Oh, Xiao Wei Xiao, you can see Bjergsen's vision as he disappears, tries to go for the ultimate, pops him up, going for the last one, doesn't get the hit! Xiao Wei Xiao, with the life steal, keeps himself alive. Down to the last second, it was just about the story of every game yesterday, and it's only going to get better. And now we want to solicit your thoughts on our Twitter question today. Here it is. Which pro in the NALCS is the biggest playmaker and why? You can send those answers to at LOESports and use the hashtag LCS. And then stay tuned to see if your answer gets read on the show later. Absolutely. So let's take a look at the standings through seven games. As we mentioned, in first, it's Counter Logic Gaming, Dignitas, and LMQ, each with five wins and two losses. Bing Bang in fourth place is Cloud9, and one game back, it is TSM in fifth. Then we've got another three-way tie with Complexity, Curse, and EG sitting in last. We will be checking back how the table stands after our day, which gets underway with a battle between Cloud9 and Counter Logic Gaming. Following that is LMQ versus Complexity, and then Evil Geniuses squaring off against Dignitas. Boom. <laughs> then we'll conclude our day with Curse taking on Team Solo Mid. And be sure to head over to LOLesports.com and tell us who you think will be victorious in today's matches. Go to schedule, select week three, and submit your picks. And while you're there, you can find all the stats, box scores, players, and team profiles to level up your LCS knowledge. 
This week you can read more about Amazing's move to the North American stage and his assimilation into TSM. Or you can secure your spot in our audience uh, to cheer for your favorite team. Hit up the tickets link for all of the details. And if you need to plan your trip, uh, then get started soon because the LCS is just a click away. Absolutely. All right, we've got to take a quick break while we set up our broadcast split push. When we come back, we'll get into our first game of the day, Cloud9 versus Counter Logic Gaming. Don't touch that mouse.